Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to go over how to calculate K from a root locus. So here's how the theory behind it works. Let's say that we have our characteristic equation written in this form, and this is the form that we usually want to get to to start creating a root locus. We have the design parameter K, and we have the loop transfer function GL. Now what I'll do is, is I'll go ahead and solve for GL of S. Well that's just negative 1 over K. Now of course a root locus is all possible closed loop pole locations for all possible positive values of K. So I know that what I'm working on here, K is positive. So here's the trick. What I'll do is, is I'll consider both sides of this equation as if they're complex numbers. That seems to make some sense, right? Because S, in general, could be any complex number in the complex plane. Of course, this thing has to be a negative real number. So with all that information, I can go ahead and write a couple equations. First off, for any complex number, the magnitude of the left-hand side has to equal the magnitude of the right-hand side. So there we go. I could write this as absolute value, but I really don't need to because I know that k is positive. The other equation is that the phase of g of l for any complex number s has to equal the phase associated with that complex number. Well, let's take a look at that complex number. I'm going to just plot negative 1 over k in the complex plane it is always going to be over here on the left hand side with a phase angle of 180 degrees or minus 180. So I could write it as plus minus 180 degrees or I could even generalize it more and say that it's 2n plus 1 pi where n is equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 etc. That's just generalizing the notion that I can have any multiple of 180 degrees. So now we can think of any pole or any point on the root locus as a KS set that satisfies these two equations. And with just that information, we'll focus the rest of this talk on this equation. What we'll do is, is create a root locus and then determine the value of k that will put my closed loop poles at some desired point on that root locus. And we'll do that via an example that we can actually just solve without a root locus. And here we go. A real simple system. There's my reference input R, my output Y. This is the plant that I'm trying to control, and here's my compensator. And any good control system needs some design requirements, and I'll abbreviate it like that. And how about we have a couple? Let's say that the steady state error has to be equal to zero when the reference input is a unit step. And the percent overshoot needs to be less than 10% when the reference input is a unit step. Well, this requirement says that my system needs to be type 1. Right now, it's type 0. Well, I really don't know what the type is. It's because I don't know what D is. But if D were just a constant proportional controller, then this would be a type 0 system. If I need it to be type 1, I need to get a pole at the origin in the compensator, something like that. So I'll go ahead and try this. We'll let the compensator be a pure integrator with some design parameter k. For this requirement, I need to have zeta greater than uh, roughly 0.6, assuming that my closed loop poles are complex and, and dominate the response of the system. Well, let's form the closed loop transfer function. It'll be k over s, s plus 4 over 1 plus k s s plus 4 which is k over s squared plus 4 s plus k. Well, clearly I just have a second order closed loop system. I can make it complex depending on how I pick k. 
I can certainly obtain this value of zeta. For instance, 2 zeta omega n is equal to 4. Uh, let's go ahead and pick zeta to be 0.7, so we should have about 5% overshoot. Then this would be 2 times 0.7, 1.4 omega n equals 4. Omega n equals 4 over 1.4. And we also know from this that omega n squared equals k. So I could certainly determine a k from all of this. But let's go ahead and do this using the root locus. So the loop transfer function for this system is just 1 over s, s plus 4. Now in a subsequent video, we'll look at how to sketch that root locus. But we could certainly use MATLAB to do it. And if you've done a few of these, you'll know that that particular loop transfer function is a real easy one to create a root locus for. So these are both k equals zero points. They're the poles of the loop transfer function. And the root locus looks like this. As you increase k, it moves along the real axis. And then, once it gets to this point, it zooms up into the complex plane. Now, if I want zeta to be 0.7, that would be about a 45 degree angle here, which would be that point. And if this is negative 2, this is negative 4, right? So that's negative 2. Then at 45 degrees, this would be 2j. So now I know that my point of interest that I want to evaluate the loop transfer at is negative 2 plus 2j. I could use negative 2j also, but I'll just use that one. And if I can get my closed loop poles right there and uh, here, then I should have a zeta of about 0.7. Okay, now as a reminder, the loop transfer function was 1 over s, s plus 4. And what I'm going to do is, is just substitute in this value of s, calculate the magnitude, then invert it, and that's k. Okay, so let's see. GL at negative 2 plus 2j is equal to 1 over negative 2 plus 2j. And this would be, if I plug that in, 2 plus 2j. And now if I calculate the magnitude of GL, it would be 1 over the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared times the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared. Let's see, that's 4 plus 4 square root of 8, so this would be 1 over 8. That's 1 over k, and so k must be equal to 8. So, if I pick k equal 8, I should have my closed loop poles right here at negative 2 plus minus 2j. And I claim that if we look at that original characteristic equation, it was a nice second order thing that looked like this. And sure enough, if we pick k equal 8, we can write this as s plus 2 squared plus 2 squared. And lo and behold, we have the real and imaginary parts of the complex poles, and we get exactly what we hoped for. Negative 2, 2j, and negative 2j. Now this was an extremely simple example, and the whole point of it was to show that we could compute k from a root locus and then check it quickly against what we know is correct. Oftentimes, when you're doing the root locus, your characteristic equation is way higher than second order, and so doing a quick check like this is impossible but we can always find k from the root locus by using this method of calculating the magnitude of the loop transfer function evaluated at the pole that you want to have occur in the compensated closed loop system. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.